Good evening, everyone. I'm Rachel Schneider. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our top story, a manhunt came to an end in Montgomery County this morning as all four suspects were taken into custody. We begin tonight with breaking news. Roanoke County Fire and Rescue responded to a house fire at around 845 this evening. Authorities in Florida are searching for not only Gabby Petito, but also her fiance, a person of interest in her disappearance. A Virginia woman is missing after going out on a hike alone at Glacier National Park in Montana. Several hundred protesters converged on the Capitol today, rallying in support of the people charged in the January 6th riot. CBS News correspondent Chris Van Cleve reports from Capitol Hill, where security was intense. Brown is accused of killing Rodney Brown and evading authorities for 18 days nearly two years ago. The scope of the destruction in the Northeast caught millions of people off guard. The Biden administration wanted to start administering booster doses of the COVID-19 vaccine next week, but the FDA said not so fast, and health officials say their primary concern right now is getting people in for their first and second shots, not their third. President Joe Biden and the First Lady will mark the 20th anniversary of September 11th by traveling to all three sites of the terror attack. The President and First Lady Jill Biden will join former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama at the 9-11 Memorial in New York City. And a study of all three COVID-19 vaccines in the United States finds Moderna is the most effective, but not by much. The CDC led the nationwide study and involved more than 3,600 adults hospitalized for COVID-19. The CDC says the seven-day average of COVID-19 deaths hit a high last week, not seen since March 1st, before the vaccine was widely available. Turning now to your hometown forecast with Chief Meteorologist Brent Watts. Brent, it looks like we have one more day of warm temperatures. You're looking at some cooler changes next week, I see. It's coming up uh, sooner than we think. With another front passing through and then cooler weather to end the week. Hey, I'll take the sunshine and also happy birthday, Ian. Oh, I just wanted to say that before you. we go. And thanks for tuning in with us, everyone. You have a great night. Gene, I just checked in with Roanoke police moments ago. Still no update on the male victim's condition and no arrest made in this case thus far. The best thing you can do is make sure you don't have valuables in plain sight to make you an easy target. What they didn't expect was waiting upwards of 45 minutes in line just for concessions or finding students in their seats. The bench trial today was one step closer to closure for the victim's family in this case. They say that even with their kids in school, they will not be requiring their own children to wear masks, and they don't think that school board officials should be doing it for them either. They suggest leaving them in the trunk or somewhere where they could be less visible again so thieves are not invited into your vehicle. The outpouring of community support is helping them to learn English, find jobs, send their children to school. The number of students in Franklin County Public Schools exposed to COVID-19 has more than doubled since Tuesday. Captain Hartman says that his fishing charter is already booking up fast for striper season this fall. For more information, you can head to our website, WDBJ7.com. At Smith Mountain Lake, Rachel Schneider, WDBJ7. Another eventful night for the Bedford County School Board took place Thursday before the public comment portion of the meeting began. Parents met outside for a rally questioning what was constitutional for the school board and the Commonwealth. I have filed the letter to have them medically exempt from wearing a mask because I am not going to let my child suffocate all day. When the board came out of their closed session, they were met with parents on both sides of the argument surrounding masks in schools. This is a public health emergency. Everybody with the American flag. I think that many of the people who oppose the mask laws here don't really understand how the mask works. But not everyone saved their opinions for the podium. You ought to walk him out on a rail with fire behind him. resulting in some parents being asked to leave before public comments were limited to only allowing one speaker in the room at a time without an audience. The government cannot kick all of our kids out of school. They are for not wearing masks and they will certainly not get rid of all of these parents who are ticked off because someone else is trying to do our job. 
tonight we had members of the public that were not respecting the speakers. They were interjecting. The board could not hear. Speakers were struggling to stay on, on base. And so we just wanted to make it a supportive environment for our, our, our guests to be in. And the school board did take another vote amongst its members, again reaffirming the superintendent's original plan for the school to require masks for staff and students K through 12. Other board members, they did oppose this vote. They said that they still think that masking should be up to the parents. But I talked with the chairman of the school board who says that after consulting with the superintendent and their attorneys, they really think that their hands are tied, especially with this latest order from the Commonwealth. Jane. All right, Rachel Schneider bringing us that information from Bedford tonight. Thank you, Rachel. Over 12 hours into their investigation, Roanoke police were still on scene at the corner of Melrose Ave and Westside Boulevard, piecing together what led to a deadly shooting at the Shell station. This is a community store. This is Shell gas station. Yeah. It's a institution for Northwest Rono. It's kind of uh, eye opening. The clerks know my grandkids. This is quite upsetting. RPD got the call around 1215 Wednesday morning. Responding officers located a woman inside a vehicle who was unresponsive with critical injuries. She was later pronounced dead at the scene. I was in my bedroom having a conversation with my grandchildren about being out on the roads at night when all of a sudden we heard what sounded like eight shots at least and I told my grandchildren this is why I don't want you out at night because you don't know what's going on. Officers also found a man with gunshot wounds inside a nearby business. He was taken to the hospital. No suspects were located. It's heartbreaking. I mean I just live a block from here. I'm scared to go out of my house at night because of this and because of this I went and legally bought a gun that I am learning how to shoot and make sure I can hit a target. It's got a bad reputation, but it's a good neighborhood. Actually, the police being over there quiets my business down a lot. A lot of people don't, you know, they just kind of avoid it. You're going to have people that would normally be at that store in the morning. They're going to go to this store. They're going to go up the street to the other gas station. Neither of the victims' identities are being released at this time, and still no arrests have been made in the case as of just about over an hour ago when we checked in with Roanoke Police. Anyone with additional information should call the Roanoke Police Department. Jean? All right, sadly, it seems like the same story with so many of these shootings. No arrests, no suspects, and no one really talking. Rachel, thank you for that update. It's been two years since a fatal crash on Brambleton Avenue took the life of Pete Orr. Kenneth Inger was in Roanoke County Circuit Court Monday, where he pleaded guilty to aggravated manslaughter, driving under the influence, and two counts of hit and run. He pleaded no contest to the felony murder charge for Orr's death. Causing that death in the commission of felonies is felony murder. Inger admitted to police he smoked marijuana before getting behind the wheel. The Commonwealth's attorney presenting evidence to the court that would have been shown to the jury had a trial taken place, including surveillance video of Inger's vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed and photos from the scene of the crash. We were very confident in the strength of our evidence and the strength of our case against him. And I think that is indicative of the fact that he chose to plead guilty rather than go to a trial. We think this plea demonstrates uh, Mr. Inger's uh, remorsefulness and acceptance of responsibility uh, in this case. Judge James R. Swanson found the evidence sufficient to conclude Inger's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, setting a sentencing date for January 25th, 2022. The county and Orr's family were hoping for something sooner. To call it torturous would be an understatement. They've been dealing with this uh, ever since September of 2019, and uh, it's been a long time coming to try and bring at least this phase of, of what they've been dealing with to an end. The attorney for Pete Orr's family was also able to provide a statement to WDBJ7 today, stating in part, today is an important step towards responsibility for this family's devastating and tragic loss. And the family will have the opportunity to present a victim impact statement at the sentencing on January 25th. Gene and Robin.